Welcome to Occupy the Land, OccupyTheLand.org. What we're doing is at the back of the shipping container, we've got a uh, pallets as a platform for this shed. Now it's only, you know, like a six by eight, but this is what we're going to put all the batteries, inverters, and everything in, and then power this whole part of the property back here with 15 kW. And I get 120 and 242. So we want to get everything out of the shipping container and just in case, you know, things happen, you know, be out here. But um, we have these pallets that we got down here. What I'm going to do is I got them almost level, but I'm going to rake dirt into it and create a, a good base here and then shimmy it up with the level and make sure we get it level. Then I'm going to cut um, some board to put in the bottom of this storage shed and then we'll auger this down because I the winds are crazy out here, so I just want to make sure it ain't going nowhere. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Then I'll show you. Uh, we'll put in the shelving unit that we have here, and then the batteries, and inverter, and charge for all that kind of stuff. And then we'll run it into the shipping container. But it'll be a hub for a bunch of stuff down here. But uh, one thing is, I'd like to keep it to where it can be mobile. We may put the entire unit to where I can just transfer it or put it on a pallet. Eventually, we either have another one or use that one that we can put on a pallet and just move it around with a forklift and take it wherever we're doing, you know, long days of trombling and that kind of thing. So what we're going to go ahead and do is flatten this out, get the level. It's pretty level, but I'm going to go ahead and get it super level, and then we'll put this back on it because you can just lift this thing. I mean, this is not that heavy. You know, I can just move it around. I moved it over by myself. So we'll put that over there, and then we'll get all the weight and everything down, and we'll start building that out. Now, I took out the um, post that we had for the solar panels, but uh, because it was sticking out in the building that we're going to do, we decided we're going to put another shipping container over there and a building in between here, and it was in the way. So I'm going to be moving those out. So we'll go ahead break this down, get it all level, put that back on it. Then we'll go ahead and put the floor in, bring the shelving unit in, and start hooking up the battery system. So that's what we're doing. Peace. Well, this shed is going to go on the back of this shipping container. But we wanted it level and uh, make sure that we had a stable foundation and didn't get wet and so on. Now, this, the wood floor will not come in direct contact with the soil. So it'll uh, it'll settle even more. Now this is moist and we kind of have, we packed it. So it's almost like a concrete pad anyway. And uh, this could be permanent, you know, semi-permanent. I could move it pretty quickly, but we need to get this going. And I think it's going to work out well. So we're going to go ahead and take and just lift this up and put it on there. And then we'll start finishing it out. But uh uh, well, I can probably do it. Here, Donna, you can just show how manly I am. All right. Pretty manly. Boom. All right, now we have get it exact but you get the idea we're going to go ahead put a wood floor in there then um we'll go ahead and get the doors on and so on then we'll start bringing out the shelving and the batteries and get that all hooked up and that'll be a thing we'll share that with you too Now on the utility side, you know, we have the septic that goes there and leach field kind of runs that way. And uh, 
The utilities for the bus, we have our water tanks and so on in there, and that's what uh, is filled up from this. And we have our septic and so on, and it's just a white and black water tanks, goes out, boom, that's taken care of. Now we have the battery compartment here, and the solar array comes in to here, and we have like 13 kilowatts of batteries, and then we have a generator under there. Now, the solar lines come in. We had them dug in, and then we needed to uh, just rip them up, you know, because we were checking uh, to get, we weren't getting the maximum amount of solar from that, and we had to track it down and uh, we got that taken care of. But I wanna go ahead and rebury these. But what I wanted to show you, I just take the front bucket and just kind of flip it up, you know, just to make it so it's not too much of a hassle digging this. But I can't get the tractor back here because of the solar panels. But I wanted to show you, you know, just how, once this gets moist, how easy it is to dig. I mean, it's just, you know, boom, boom. And it's just soft soil, and you add water and stuff grows. Like here is grass. Now, Arizona used to be lots of grass, and that's why they, uh, on our state seal for Arizona, it is mining, agriculture, and cattle. And what they did is they just released, we're still in open range out here. The cattle come out in the winter, it rains, all this grass comes up. And there's a lot of places that they had the mesquite beans on trees that they do. So Arizona used to be a lot greener. We're finding that out. You go through historical records and so on. And whenever they start, you know, those are all our boxes of all the crap we've been getting. We to take that to the, to the dump. Now, this is... Uh, soil that really allows for a lot of growth. This is just like a week and a half that it's done this. Now that's why we're going to green the desert by retaining all this water on the property. And you're going to see, this is going to pop green really fast. Now what Donna's going to do, she likes having green around the bus and she got this cheap um, artificial grass stuff. But this stuff is, you know, real thin. You're still walking on rocks. So what we're going to do is um, we did this when we first got here, but we tried wood chips and we tried all kinds of stuff. And the wood chips, you get some of the thorns from some of the bushes and no, uh, don't like it. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is they have AstroTurf when they replace soccer fields and uh, you know putting greens or um, football fields and athletic stuff. They have all of that grass. Now our Oldest daughter, one of the homes that they had, they got a soccer field and they got a lot of the green grass and they did their backyard and it was awesome. Well, Donna wants to do that. We're going to go in to Phoenix to have a place to where you can, you know, how much of a soccer field do you want? So she's probably going to do, I don't know, 20, 30 feet wide. She wants to take this and put it underneath the pool and make this nice. She's going to get a sturdy wind resistant steel frame not too many billion dollars gazebo that'll go over here make her kitchen out of outside because she likes cooking outside and you know she got that stove that thing's pimp that that was only 120 bucks and it's a five burner and this thing is awesome i we just started using it and i mean damn you know so you can make a kitchen now the outdoor main kitchen uh outdoor entertainment area it will be that pad that where that bigger dome is way over there on the other side of that building yeah you've seen it before so we're going to go ahead and green this up because we got family coming for the holidays so we're going to make it nice for them but i didn't want to get too cheap like a pop-up because you know that's not going to withstand the wind that comes out here you know wind resistant to 30 something miles yeah i laugh at your 30 miles an hour so we're going to go ahead and uh concrete screw it into pads that we have over here so she has that the wind uh the guy wires that we had were poly and the sun sun rotted them after a year and then our awning ripped off just boom it was it was 
on the other side of the bus all of a sudden. So it didn't mess up anything else, and it needed. It was the original with this. I was surprised it lasted as long as it did. But um, we'll probably get another one here for that shade, and then the gazebo and the grass area here. And that's kind of one of the plans for the holiday season so our family's comfortable out here because not everybody can stay in the bus. For Donna and I, it is very comfortable out here. We, we enjoy it. But if we're going to have guests and stuff, we need to upgrade a little bit. We have the shipping container. The second one is coming tomorrow. And I'm going to be spending some time on that and uh, ordered a bunch of shells that will go in. And we can start transferring a lot of the storage and things we need to get access to from that big white trailer that's been our storage. And we have been getting a lot of stuff done, it, more infrastructure, but we really, really, really need all that so we can get to fashioning the frames and the windows and customizing the stamp press, the integration of the domes onto the... Uh, stem walls here and so on we're right at that point that we got a lot of decisions to make and i need to workshop to do that so i've been focusing on the capabilities of that before i get too much further into eh, i wish i didn't do that i need to do that and i wish i had the stuff for that well that's what we're doing so in the meantime while it's moist like this i can really carve the desert and make it drain exactly where I want it to do. After I get a good rain, I can see where I need a little tweak here and a little bit of tractor there and a little bit, and then boom. Because when it does rain, and if you can retain this stuff, you can get grasses will grow for months, you know, until then it gets too dry and it goes away. But we're gonna green this. We haven't even really got started, and you can see it starting to green. You go over there and you see the desert just starts to green up. That's why there's so much cattle out here.
So now we have these two shipping containers that are 30, just a little over 30 feet apart that we're gonna put our 30 by 60 by 22 foot tall building.